Hello, I'm Doug Musio. This is the second of a two-part city talk on New York City, New York State, and U.S. Transit. The Arc Tunnel, the Northeast Corridor, high-speed rail, the Tappan Zee Bridge, changing culture. Joining me again to talk all things transit is Robert Buzz Paswell. Dr. Paswell is a distinguished professor of civil engineering at the City College of New York. He is also the director of the CUNY Institute of Urban Systems and the director emeritus of the University Transportation Research Center, a federally funded center providing research and training to transportation professionals. Professor Paswell has served on numerous city, state, federal, and international commissions and task forces. From 2009 to 2010, Professor Paswell served as interim president of City College. Buzz, last week we basically talked about the MTA. Right. Let's move away from the MTA and take a, a more regional and New York State and New Jersey perspective. So we be I began the show with ARC. Right. What is ARC or what isn't ARC? Well, ARC was originally stood for access to the region's core. It's the idea that you needed another Access tunnel. to the region's core. So you have to get into Manhattan. From New Jersey. Right. And you need, there was another tunnel needed uh, to bring in uh, commuter rail. And uh, and eventually, as, as we know from Amtrak, you need a tunnel to bring in more Amtrak. Capacity. Absolutely. Why? Because the tunnels are old. They're, they're outdated. Amtrak has already announced that it's going to start shutting down yep. some of these tunnels. Yep. I used it's, the system. Not out of spite or anything. The fact is that infrastructure has an age. And after a while, you have to repair it. You have to replace it. You have to modernize it. And, and, it and breaks the down. region, with, fortunately, this is, the, this is a great, great region. It's growing economically. It's been growing uh, for the past 20 years with that, with that blip when, sure. they, when the bankers sold sure. it all out. But, oh, but, I love those little political yeah, zingers. Go yeah, ahead, but, Buzz. But, but uh, uh, it continues to grow. People want to be here. It's a center of arts, culture, finance, and entrepreneurship. And, you know, for all the entrepreneurs you hear in Silicon Valley, there might not be a single Silicon Valley, but there are so many little mini places in New York that we have as many entrepreneurs sure. as out there. Oh, yeah. Uh, but uh, so New York, people want to be in New York. And in order to be in New York, you have to get to New York. You have to have access. Transportation, that's what my, our work is about, is, is providing access, reducing the cost of getting from A to B. And you're not going to reduce the cost if you make it more congested, you make it harder, you make it, you make it so, so difficult that people say in the end, hey, I don't want to live there anymore. I want to live in one of these more casual cities. The, 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 the 20 to 25 group is now thinking of maybe I should live in these small cities around the country where I can walk, you know, live in downtown. Yeah, but it ain't and walk New around. York. It ain't New York, but, th but they're making, but they feel connected because they're connected yeah, by, by in uh, the things in their right. hands and the things sure. in their ears. Right. So, so, so we need a tunnel. We need it. We've needed Don't tell it. me. I come in 20, 37 miles from northern New Jersey on Route 3 on the bus, hit the Lincoln Tunnel, and forget it. You should Four, bring something to read. It. Read? Yeah. I, I, I could bring the encyclopedia. Read, big, read thick books. Is right, I, War and Peace. You Go know, ahead. The, the interesting thing, I, uh, we moved back to New York in 1990, and one of the first things that I got involved in uh, back in 1990 was a group from the Port Authority of New Jersey Transit and the MTA were working on ARC. And uh, I came as the director of the University Transportation Research Center, and we got involved with them in just talking about sure. studying it. And everything was a go, and it was a go until just a few years ago. Okay, wait, and it was going to be funded. Because I want to hear the whole story well, so I can was get gonna, angry. It was, it was, it was. A lot of the money was going to come from the feds, uh, and originally, what ninety percent? Yeah, I mean, well, not so, quite. But uh, and, and originally, New Jersey Transit or the state of New Jersey, state of New York through the MTA and the Port Authority were going to were going to have go equal ahead. shares in it. Then. Uh, I think New Jersey uh, backed out a little bit, and then 
they backed out in a big way when wait they minute, closed it down. Wait a minute, it, it wasn't New Jersey, it was who? Well, no, well, the governor, who? the governor pulled the tunnel, but before that, there were there was less and less attraction because the cost of the tunnel went up and people weren't sure where okay. the money was coming from. Talk about but, talk about the New Jersey governor. Just just let it all hang out, Buzz. Well, no, I mean, do me I a think, favor. I think as a number a friend. as a, as a transportation planner. Ah. Oh. As a transportation planner, uh, uh, we think it was an error to 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 to, to do the tunnel. We feel that that uh, New Jersey wouldn't have been left. New Jersey residents like you wouldn't have been left with huge tax bills. No. Or on the contrary, even if you were left with huge tax bills, you would get in return increased access to New York. So your savings in travel time over a year would more than pay for the extra taxes. Right, right. So, so it's a balance. And what does the governor use the money for that New Jersey was supposed to kick into ARC? Well, it was supposed you to be me. regional. He used it for New Jersey highways and things that should have come out of the trust fund. New Jersey gas tax is too low. Gas taxes should be higher. I, okay, let's... Uh, st- but that's, uh, I'm speechless. No, I, 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 I have a house in, in, in upstate New York, and we drive, and we pay those taxes and gas, and I live in New Jersey. It's 40 cents difference. But our roads are terrible. And in a sense, it, I, don't start me. Go ahead. Well, Talk you, about raising the gas tax before I, I'm well, totally Well, I think part there. of the, the gas tax, the, the gas tax has been used for years to, to fund something called the Highway Trust Fund. Right. Which is where the states get money from the federal government to, uh, to pay for, for maintenance, uh, rebuilding new roads and, and some maintenance or, or share in maintenance, Not, but more the capital rather than the maintenance things. But the Highway Trust Fund is, run, is running out of money because the gas tax was fixed. It was never indexed to right. the price of gasoline. Right, right, and, uh, So it was fixed, what, at 19 and, and, cents and, a gallon? But the point is, is the gas tax is a user fee. Right. And a, a lot of us feel that if users want better highways, they should be willing to pay for highways. But surveys in New Jersey showed that people wanted their highways fixed, wanted better transit. And didn't want to pay for it. Didn't want oh, to pay either oh, taxes. Big, su- big surprise. Everybody well, wants a free line. Oh, come on. Well, in, you, it's crazy. Cal- in California, when they improved the highways, they did surveys. You're right. How no, no, it? I agree. And people, do you want to pay more tolls? Do you want to pay taxes? Do you want to buy bonds? And people willing to pay taxes, provided that they knew that the taxes went for the improvement of the right. roads. Right. And also, don't forget, I mean, there's clearly a more automobile-centered right. culture right. there as well. Well, so not, not more than New Jersey. Oh, God, please, don't stop me. And, but, <laughs> I'm not going to even go there. Talk about the Northeast car. Talk about rail. I mean, you're in Europe. Right. You get on the trains, they go everywhere. Right. They go 150 miles an hour. They're totally comfortable. Well, you, 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 don't, you don't get that here. You, you go to Europe, you know you can go to any rail station in any country, and you know you can get from Anywhere here, any else. place in Europe. Absolutely. Connections and quickly. Or something. You know, quickly an hour from Brussels to Paris. I right. mean, excuse right. me. And in total, why, why can't we? It's not really we can't. It's that our values... Don't allow, and our politics different country, don't allow us. Europe, yeah, no, I Europe, know. Europe, Europe, Europe is much more connected. Grew up, we're oh, always yeah. connected. We're connected right. by rail, and and the car and, uh, came car came late to Europe. The United States, big distances, the the densities are on the coasts, and and, right. and oh, maybe and the lake region. And, and, and around the lakes, and perhaps down the Mississippi. So you have huge spaces. So running rail across huge spaces, you know, the equivalent of what you would do in Europe, it's it's like. Running from Paris maybe to uh, to Novosibirsk or something like that. No, you know, I, you I think I'll pass that one up. Right. So, so you, Rome, you wouldn't maybe r- Paris to Rome. That's very different. That's that's you know New York to New Orleans or something. Oh, like okay. That. And there are trains. So the the idea of the Northeast Corridor is that in this densest part of the United States, and basically one of the economic drivers of the United States. And we talked last week if the United States wants to be globally competitive, it has to continually invest in its infrastructure. Sure. To keep it globally competitive, right. not only, not only for the passengers to get from place to place, but to m- begin to move goods from place to place. Yeah, but there's 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 the technical feasibility and the political feasibility. I mean, you know, this this may be tr- betray my political biases, but it doesn't seem like the Republican Congress and their mindset is forthcoming with those funds, given their 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 almost blind anti-tax sentiment. I mean, well, it's a I lot think, of I a think, lot of politics. I there. think. I think Amtrak 
which is basically the, the U.S. carrier, sure. uh, is in a tough position. There's tremendous demands made for it by Congress and not the budget to meet it. Yep. So when they don't meet what Congress wants, it's they said fail. to be inefficient. Right. It's got a great executive director, Joe Boardman, who used to be New York's uh, Secretary of Transportation. Yep. He knows what he's doing. Yep. He understands yep. the system. He's trying to it's do what we better. said with the MTA, trying to modernize it's it by a new better. rolling stock. But it's... But but uh, it ain't the deal. He's got to compete with the freight railroads. That, right. That's a that's a huge issue, and and uh, well, that, go ahead. And, and and the more you compete with the freight railroads, and and freight demand is going through the sky. Uh, but we don't have the tunnel. I mean, Jerry Nadler's been crying well, that's just, for that's just in the region. You need right. You need to. So, no, I understand. Freight that. needs capacity talking, across right, the whole country. Right. I get it. And in the northeast and you're talking corridor. talking the northeast. Well, define the northeast corridor. Baltimore. It, it, that's Rich, not Baltimore. Rich, Richmond to Boston. And, oh, and, Richmond. And then maybe that's up not to Maine. And, that's well, sort of cheating. Yeah, well, Richmond. Rich, I, I would say thing. maybe. Washington? New Jersey? No, oh, yeah, nice. Forget it. Okay. Well, so Washington you're talking, to Boston you're talking is about the, the megalopolis. Yeah, Washington and Boston is, okay. is the heart. You, wanna, you, want to, you would like to get from Washington to Boston or, or uh, from, from New York to Boston, New York to Washington, hour, hour and a half. And you could do that. I mean, the technology is there. It doesn't mean we don't have the infrastructure no. to do it. No, but the technology is there. But you have but to just, lay all new tracks, signals. Just, oh, you, go yeah, ahead. Yeah, it's, a, it's a billions of dollars of yeah. investment. But, so, so there's a Northeast Carter right. study going on by the Federal Railway Administration, uh -huh. and they've got a number of alternatives, and they're, they're really good alternatives. But with each alternative, you have a date on there that says, hopefully my grandchildren will be able to, to ride on these things. This is not aggressive planning. And again, it comes to this whole nature of, of funding in the United States. And, so it's and, all, and you're saying it's primar primarily or exclusively money? And how you derive the it's money. Mo well, it's, it's, it's complex. It's money, and it's going through political jurisdiction. Okay, that's it. Okay, go ahead. I'm sorry. And, uh, uh, the, when England built Crossrail, which is 40 miles south of London, yep. going through uh, a dozen different townships yep. and everything, they started out with two things. They started out with agreements on right-of-way location and stations and everything from all the townships. They had all those handshakes in advance, and they also started out with everyone committing to their share of funds connected to I've the I've ridden, yeah. So they, you haven't ridden, it's not open yet. No, the line. No, the cross rail is brand new. Oh, oh the, uh, the, okay. A, What's the new, what was the newest uh, subway well, they, line? The, 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 Victoria? Uh, the, the, no, the no. Victoria line extension and the, the Jubilee line. Oh, extension. that's it, Jubilee, I'm sorry. And, and um, uh, when London had the Olympics, they built a whole South of Thames line in, in three or four years, you know, by, by the connecting South of Thames is just boom. It, it's, it's, and it's, it's booming. incredible. And you get return on it's your investment by, by oh, the the economic tourist, activity. The, the tourist alone, culture, you've got the Tate Modern, you've got the, the wheel, all kinds of clubs. It's really very smart development, that the, and they right. use the transit system. Go ahead, I'm sorry. So, no, well, in the Northeast Corridor, just think. If you can go from New York to Washington or New York to Boston an hour, an hour and a half, where you walk to the station, and instead of making these complicated reservations over Amtrak and printing out your ticket, you go, you, you buy a ticket with your phone, you get on the next train because there's so many, you don't have to have a reservation, and you know you'll get there in an hour and a half. It changes the location of it, and you do more business between these places. This is what they found in Europe. When they built high-speed rail, all of the, the towns like Lille or... or or uh, Frankfurt, the smaller, the smaller of the large cities, uh -huh. had spurts of growth because they were connected to the to the capitals of the country, and and uh, it, it they just were economic development generators. In the old days, I would have said, "What are you smoking?" Because this ain't it. It's, this this there seems to be not only the lack of the political will, but the lack of planning foresight. Risk averse? What is it? What's happening in California? A group of people in California, High Speed Rail Commission in California, very aggressive. I have a number of friends that, that, that work on the commission. And they pushed and they met the NIMBYs, they met the anti tax people, they fought everyone. And uh -huh. everyone said it's a boondoggle, it's going to cost billions and then over billions, and the estimates were, were whatever it was. And, and they said, no, we're going to have high speed rail from San Diego all the way up, up to the north. And they're starting in a in a small corridor, and nobody likes where they're starting because everybody thinks 
They, I don't want it, but you should start, start where with I am. Them. Yeah. Right, right, yeah. exactly. So, so what are they going, north so to south? They're, they're, south they're to starting north? Uh, north to south uh, in, in, the, um, in the northern part of the uh, well, they the could area, do like they did come with the transcontinental. They could start yeah, from the well, top end. Of, hopefully, they meet but somewhere. They're, but they're starting, and and uh, they fought incredible obstacles. But it can be done. I know in Chicago wants to build one to Milwaukee to to St. Louis, um, uh, in in uh, Washington to. Uh, okay, what are the benefits? The benefits what? are economic development benefits. It changes the shape. It shrinks the landscape basically. Access shrinks the landscape. And it's a node where you, you can, or a precipitant and, where you can do development. And it's done a couple of things. It, it's, it's changed. It's, it's not only saying, I want to go from, let's say, Paris to Lille. And so Lille says, oh, we're going to be a great center. But Lille now has conference centers and, and hotels. Right. The station itself becomes an attraction because right. you've got shops and, and office spaces around it and everything. It changes the nature of what you are because it's, it, it's, it takes... Maybe the same time to go from Paris to Lille as it might from the suburb of Paris into central Paris if you're commuting. So, okay. So it really changes the nature of how people travel, the nature of their and the nature. And, and as you talked last week and, 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 and more extensively in, in various testimonies, it would be the impact of, you know, instantaneous, asynchronous, right. and, and immediate information technology. Right. Okay. High-speed rail, in a sense, it, it, it transcends Northeast Corridor. Well, we're talking, when I talk Wait about a Northeast Corridor, we're talking about high-speed. Right, I mean, when I, we were in Shanghai, that train, what does it travel, 250 well, miles an yeah, hour? Yeah, that, that, the maglev, yeah, that's a... That's a uh, that's an ad for what they can do. Uh, well, excuse me, but it, but they're doing it's it. a great ad. It's a great ad. Are you kidding me? But high-speed rail, uh, 150 to 180 miles yeah. an hour, uh, what your rail went. Um, high-speed rail is not Amtrak going faster. I think high-speed rail is or no, modern vehicles, yep. New modern track. service, yep. modern stations, yep. easy to get tickets, easy to access, yep. very different than your airline experience where you have to fuss for tickets, oh, God. price for tickets, and then you have to go through these, this, this incredible thing. Well, that's the security, that on, yeah. And, and, and the crowding of the planes. Oh, yeah. And, and Please. terrible service Please. on airlines oh, now. Thank you. You Thank know, you. And, Remind and, me. And the seats going oh, back and, excellent. and all that. Yeah. So train, train travel is different. Americans like train trains. travel. Oh, yeah. And, and they're going to like it in dense corridors. But they don't like slow Amtrak trains that get delayed because there's a freight in front of them. Yeah, but it, it, or the cars. I think there's almost an anti-train culture. Well, there's a quote-unquote uh, good government uh, uh, uh -oh. And the assumption is that it comes a I diatribe. Like it, yeah, Go ahead. <laughs> the assumption is if we don't like what they say, we're bad government. There's, I'll just call them good government, and we want better government. Maybe that's a better one. Oh, okay. Or best government that says, well, these are tax dollars, and we shouldn't spend tax dollars on something no one wants, and people want their car. Sure, people, nobody's taking your car away, but what they're saying is we're going to create economic opportunities in this country that don't exist now. And we better look at where they're going to exist. Because yeah, but you're taking in the form of taxes. I mean, absolutely. clearly. Uh, but then you have that free lunch phenomenon that you you mentioned that, yes, they want this, they want that, they want that, but or no don't taxes. want to cut, but no taxes right. well, or yeah. fees. And, but in, in California, they found a lot of private developers coming in. I know that uh, in the Chicago area and in Florida. Well, that would, that, I mean, if you had a coalition of, business folks, developers, where you were, weren't really expropriating them, but in, in a sense, you know, reducing, in a sense, their profits by putting stuff into the system, that might work. I don't... I, I, so you're talking about sort of the deconcentration of population via an improved... Uh, no, no, it just, it's, it's perhaps the growth, the growth of, of cities of that are stagnant. It might help cities like St. Louis and Detroit. Regrow because they become more accessible. These are cities that have great. Is, it, is the problem lack of, of accessibility? Is it or is it a whole kind? Well, it's lack of it's lack. It's Socio demographics. Yeah, I mean, well, lousy the, baseball teams. Well, not in the case of no, St. Louis. No, no. Well, we'll see. The uh, the um, a big sh problem was the Great Lakes were a great success. Right. In in in, in manufacturing. Sure. And when the space age came, the space age was moved to the south and west rather than building it on the backs of people that have already proven 
manufacturing. It was the government that basically shifted, and John, starting with Johnson, a good Democrat, uh, shifted things south and west, and that really hurt the cities of the Great Lakes. Don't start me about, you know, the, the people south of the Mason-Dixon line taking our resources. I mean, what did, what did they get, 20 billion? I mean, if it weren't for our capital, you think the West would be an arid desert. Just hold on to our water, that's but, all. Right, exactly. Excuse me, let me not get too crazy here. Talk about, let's, let's get a little more micro. Let's go back, in a sense, in, into New York. This Tappan Zee Bridge thing is sort of a very interesting case study it of is. Is. politics, economics, strategy. So they're replacing the bridge. Has to be replaced. It's it's, it's it, worn out. It's engineer, you know, you design you, a bridge. You're afraid for to like drive that. on it. I'm never. Not, no, I'm gonna go ahead. Well, maybe I would be. I wouldn't know, but uh, I rarely go across the Tappan Zee Bridge. But uh, bridges are designed for a certain lifetime. But as, as we know. With, with bridges in the United States, a large number of which are over capacity, is that the amount of traffic and the weight of the traffic far exceeded the engineering projections of what they had. In and Atlanta. you have collapses all the so, time, killing, you know, multiple people. We had people. one in New York uh, 30 years ago. Right, and then what, and you had in the Midwest right. all the time. And in Minneapolis. So, yes. So um, uh, the Tamsi Bridge has to be replaced. No one knew how to do it. And, and I, you know, I give this governor I call this a genius move of the governor. And I know a lot of my friends say, well, you know, it's, it's showboating something. It isn't. He, the Tappan Zee Bridge couldn't be done, and he said, it's going to be done, and we're going to find the money. They're still going to find the money, but they started the bridge. One way or another. Wait a minute. One way or another. No, well, it's going to be paid for, it's right. It's going to be paid yeah, for, but I, and you're going to have a new Tappan Zee Bridge. Right, but, I mean, aren't the means by which you pay for things important? Well, they certainly are. And it does, isn't it sort of... They're not quite dishonest. Well, to, that, the, to well, build it and say I mean, he's going to—he <laughs> it will be built by honest means. He oh tried, no, I don't mean uh, he, dishonest no, in no, the No, sense. I mean you know t taking from the wrong pot. Oh, okay. The, the governor tried to look at one pot of money that he thought was successful—the the air quality money. Couldn't do it, and and or water quality money. Couldn't do it. So he's he's looking. For other pots of money. Wait a so second. We'll see. This four billion dollar bank settlement. Everybody's yeah. after that money, but that that's at least a, a potential yeah. s source of some of the funding, both for the Tap and Z and for the MTA. But then you, you have you have competing interests here. New York is still. That's all. It is. We haven't talked about schools and healthcare. No. Oh yeah. Okay. Let's 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 sort of move off sort of the politics and economics. One question, being a, a, a Queens boy, is how do you serve communities that are currently underserved by mass transit, particularly if you follow the Citizens Budget Commission advice, and, and, I, and I think your advice is that you begin to scale back at what you might do to expand the system. So how do you serve? Well, you I mean, look at parts of Queens are just totally underserved by rail, certainly. Well, you're not, you're not going to get rail quickly any place. What about and, light rail? Light rail is also expensive and takes a long time. You could use express buses. You could use more old-fashioned bus service, but bus service... With dedicated lanes. With dedicated lane, you got to do it. And, and what we've learned from select bus service that we should be applying to other bus service is that people want to be on a comfortable bus if you pay before you get on the bus, you can get on and off much more quickly. Yeah. Uh, and so, and if you have zones, the bus can stop in zones. You can also get on and off more quickly. So you need you need to rethink bus service, especially in the outer boroughs and cross borough bus service. Okay. Has the MTA planned for this expansion? And would this expansion be on the chopping block if we need to? maintain and upgrade our communications and signaling. I suspect that they are looking at it gradually. The MTA is, is, is I, I don't think service is adequate now. I think bus service, there's too many gaps in, in service. The, the headways between, when I first moved back in 1990, there were buses, the 104 bus ran every three minutes down Broadway, every three minutes. Now there's 15 minute headways in the yeah. elevator. You shouldn't have that. Should, this is New York. Yeah, but to a stop, what, what, what? Having lived in Queens and, you know, and, and underserved areas, if you don't serve them now, 
And if there's a trade-off. If you don't serve them now, you're really producing a harm. So mm -hmm. maybe we don't replace stations to do this new stuff. You mean you mean use capital funds? Yeah, to do capital that? funds. Well, I think I think that's we talked last week. We talked about the fact that I think the whole capital budget needs to be reevaluated yeah. in terms of what are just what you're saying. What are the needs now? What are the needs to 2020? Right. Which are very different than the needs from 1990 to the year 2000. Right. When, when some of these projects first came sure. on board. Sure. Absolutely. And, and you have to look at it, and you have to also. Uh, not just sit and assume this is the only money you're going to get. Sure, you're, you're, the governor says it's bloated, and, and other people might say you've got to rein in, but it costs money to provide service, and you have to be aggressively go out and find the money okay. to provide the service. Okay, we got a minute. Fair hike. Established at 4% at 215. You too want low. more? Too fares low. Are too low. Fares okay, are too how low. much would you raise them? I would probably. Uh, I would probably raise the fare to three dollars, but, but, and every you know, the I can hear the equity. stones against the no, building. No, right no, there's an equity issue. One is the fares are discounted for commuters, right? As, as you as you know now, right? And secondly, uh, people who who low income, people who have handicaps, who, who need to get to work, they should be subsidized by their employers or by the state so that their fares are lower. My 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 mantra with this is that the MTA is in the business of providing transportation. Right. They should provide what that transportation costs. Okay. If the government says there's a social, we have a social obligation to our riders, they then should pay down the social okay. obligation. Okay, I mean, we've run out of time, but I can't, real quick, city contribution to the MTA, too low. Much too low. It's got to be raised. It's got to be raised, but the city needs more board members in the MTA to do that. And that, we, that goes back to our conversation yes, last week. Yes. You need structural change. Yes, yes. Are you sanguine? Quick. Am I sanguine? Uh, I mean, I have, a, I have a senior bus pass. I'm happy. Oh, <laughs> okay, we'll stop there. My special thanks to Professor Robert Paswell for his insight and expertise and for the tutorial on New York City, New York State, and U.S. transportation and transportation needs. Dr. Buzz. I think, I think I'm Doug Musio. Let us know what you think about this show. You can reach us at cuny.tv. When you get there, click on the bar that says contact us and send your email. Whatever it is, thanks, no thanks, obnoxious, do it. Send it.